Hello and welcome to Daily Kefefe on Unsafe Space with Carter and Carrie. Today is Tuesday, August 20th. <laughs> thank you for joining us. You can't just stop there, Carrie. You got to keep going. You got to say thank you for subscribing. Please like and share the video. We need your support to keep going because YouTube has demonetized 98% of our videos because they don't like us for wrong think. Go to Subscribestar. You can go to unsafespace.com. You can listen to the podcast. There's lots of things you can say. Do all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> and head salesperson, <laughs> Gary Smith. <laughs> I'll get one of us has to be good at sales that's like never been my thing so <laughs> so today we're going to talk about Susan Sarandon and I jokingly said we're going to call this episode Susan Sarandon is a badass and she can vote for whoever she wants to vote for and Carter said he's not particularly a fan of Susan's I th- we could call it Susan Sarandon is bad or Susan Sarandon is an ass but I don't know what I would what? say she's a badass <laughs> What? Well, Carrie- she's a progressive leftist who the only reason she didn't vote for Hillary is because Hillary wasn't too wasn't far enough to the left. The only thing good about her politics is she's anti-war. I like her anti-war stance. Yeah, I respect it. But the rest of her stuff is just progressivism. Which, so. but she's a sincere. Okay, here's the thing. She's not an SJW. Uh, I don't I, view I, her as such. I don't. I don't know she's enough. Like- but I do know she's a self-described progressive who supported Ralph Nader. So right. I'd be surprised by 2019 if she's not an SJW now. But no, I don't, I don't think she is. And I think she's an actual progressive. She's the type of progressive who's going to agree more with us than with the SJW left. I don't know what I would agree with on any progressive issue. I mean, Anti-war. I guess maybe. What? Anti-war. You just said. Is that a progressive thing? Yeah. An actual progressive is anti-war. Okay. So if she's like anti-war... Uh, anti-war on drugs, pro-gay marriage, those are things that I could right. be behind. Right. But I think she's also simultaneously anti-capitalism, anti-Second Amendment, anti-basically U.S. Well, so you disagree with her on some things, but on others, you agree with her. Here's what I like about her. First of all, Thelma and Louise, okay? I never saw that because it seems like a chick flick. Um, it's an excellent movie. You should watch it. And yeah, second but is of it all, a chick flick? Can you be honest? Yes, but not not the kind not, not the kind you're thinking of. <laughs> I will rewatch Missing in Action instead. <laughs> and <laughs> I've I've probably seen Thelma Louise a hundred times. Okay, I can quote it. Anyway, Thelma Louise. That's one reason. Number two, and I was saying this to people when I was arguing with them last night about her. She's no matter what you think of her, because I had some conservatives in my timeline who were like. I don't really like her or her politics, but I respect her for saying what she believes. And I'm like, yes, you have to respect her integrity. At least I think I think you do, if you're honest, because she votes for who she thinks the best is the best candidate. She says what she believes. She's clearly a person in, in search of truth. And she's not intimidated by these bullies. And uh, she's back in the news for some reason. I don't know why she's trending on Twitter. I think, I think it might have been because of um, Deborah Messing, who... Honestly, that woman seems very unbalanced, but she... Um, who, wait, who's Deborah Messing? Because I don't even know who Deborah Messing is, although I oh recognize the name. She's that actress from Will and Grace. Another show I've never watched. Me, it's not a good show. Don't worry about it. Um, but she, she uh, is, she's one of those celebrities on Twitter who just kind of... Before Twitter, you didn't know which celebrities were mentally ill. But now you can. But now Tom Arnold has a Twitter account, and so <laughs> right, it's uh, very clear. <laughs> Jim Carrey, Tom Arnold, Deborah Messing—they right. all okay. have problems. Anyway, so she tweeted something a couple days ago, I think, and she might have been the reason why this started trending again. But she basically was like, "How do you like the revolution, Susan?" Like, kind of. Oh, I trying, see. Trying to say everything that's happening, everything that's happening in Trump's America is Susan Sarandon's fault. Well, let's give people some context because I didn't remember this, uh, mostly because I try very hard to not care about Susan Sarandon. But let's, uh, should we play the video? Come on, Bull Durham, okay? I don't think I saw Bull Durham either. (sighs) Okay, go ahead. I did see, wasn't she in uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yes, Rocky Horror. She was in that. And I'm, I, uh, what was the guy, Tim... 
Curry. He's dead though, right? Did he All die? Right. Okay, anyway. I think so. Anyway, so what I'm looking at right now is a tweet from Rain of April, who I guess here, I'll just, you guys can watch with me as I click on this crap. So I guess is Rain of April is a, she's a blue check mark. Who's this? Look, April. Read her bio. <laughs> Rain. Oscars so white. Rainy day jobs creator. Diversity and inclusion advocate, culture commentator, Sephora equity advisor. Keep BC free, she, her. That's wow. like the most SJW, professional SJW bio. Like she's straight out of central casting. She's straight out of the SJW AI machine. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, what is equity at Sephora? Sephora is a makeup company. She's the director yeah. of equity at Sephora. <laughs> Well, she's no, she's an equity advisor. I don't equity know. Advisor. I guess they need advice on how to treat people equally. And she knows all about it. Okay, so she tweeted, I don't know why Susan Sarandon is trending. I don't care. But here's a reminder of who she is. Now, she and says that like it's an insult. They, they believe that's an insult. Like this video you're about to play, this was big during the election. All of, I, this took me back to the 2016 election because I had a lot of friends who just loved piling on Susan Sarandon and posting, and they would get so triggered and offended every time she did an interview because they couldn't stand that she wouldn't get on the Hillary bus. But they say, like, this is who she is. Yeah, who she is, a principled person? Who now, are you? To be clear, she was on the Bernie bus, right? Yeah, she was on the Bernie bus. So was I. Right, but when Bernie didn't get the nomination, she was not one of the people who then went over and followed Clinton. She, correct. I don't know who she supported after that. Stein. Okay, well let's let's watch this video. I'm I apologize to everyone who, like me, doesn't want to see this. She looks like she's in Harry Potter, but not in a good way. Although actually, she does look like she could be a professor of potions or something. Okay, you ready? The reason we're in the situation we're in is because everyone has been voting the lesser of two evils for so long. Uh, it's important to have a new party. And it's important, therefore, to get these independent candidates to 5%. And Hillary Clinton is almost certainly going to win. She's got every neocon. She's got all the press. She's got all the networks. She's got the newspapers, everyone behind her. If you wake up on Wednesday morning next week and it's President Trump, you won't feel... An, a, an ounce of, of, of contrition or regret, you won't say, oh, you... For everything, everything that I care about, I'm worried about the wars, I'm worried about Syria, I'm worried about all of these things that actually exist, TPP, I'm worried about fracking, I'm worried about the environment. No matter who gets in, they don't address these things right. because money has taken over our system. So for me, it doesn't matter. The fact that Bernie Sanders, the man who you supported, who you've been a big fan of, the fact that he says, You've got to vote for Hillary. You've got to make that choice in this election. Does that carry no, no, no weight with you? Bernie also said, no matter who I tell you to vote for, don't listen to me, vote your heart. A lot of women of, of, of your generation may take the view that is actually quite a big thing for the United States to elect a, a woman president. Is that, does that not sway you to say, Hillary Clinton, first woman president, that would be a big moment for the US in, in a good way? You know, there's, I, I want the right woman. I want, uh, I, there are women that have, uh, you know, great women that have, uh, that I admire that have headed nations. And then, you know, you've got, you've had a woman. I don't know how you felt about that. Uh, but it's not, I don't vote with my vagina. You know, this is bigger than, than that. And I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about Trump and Hillary because that's not why I'm here. This is bigger than this winning who wins this election. So I will say I like I do I do like a couple things about this interview, Carrie. Even though Susan Sarandon is not my prom date of choice, uh, she can be mine. She could be yours. Um, first of all, uh, I I don't vote with my vagina is a pretty great line, and and they were so pissed about that at the time. It's the right way to to look at things is to vote for you know policies beliefs. Yes. And, you know, ideas, not body parts or even though, anything else. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. Even, I, even though I was still in my SJW bubble back then, this resonated with me. So I guess even then I was starting to see, well, there's something different 
from, I'm different from a lot of these people in my echo chamber because this made them very angry that she would say that. And I was like, but she's right. I'm not going to vote for, and, and these people are hypocrites. They wouldn't vote for Sarah Palin. So clearly it does matter which vagina they're voting for. Right. Right. Um, the other thing I want to just point out is she listed three things. She was worried about Syria wars, TPP and fracking. Those were the three things she listed. Hillary would have been worse on Syria. There's no, there's no indication that Hillary was anything less than a standard warmonger. I mean, look at what, look what she did when she was secretary of, of state. Look what happened in Libya. Like there's no, I, I don't think we can say that, that Syria would have been better with Hillary. So she should have voted for Trump on Syria. TPP, Trump killed TPP, assuming that she was opposed to it. She She's should have voted for Trump on TPP. That leaves fracking. Fracking Trump has not helped her on. Incidentally, I have an episode about fracking coming out, hopefully this week. Uh, fracking is not a problem. You've been lied to about fracking. So she just misrepresents, she just thinks she's, she watched the wrong documentary and thinks fracking is a, is a problem and it's not. Apparently but, I watched that documentary too because I think fracking is a problem. So I, I don't know why I think that. So I'm looking forward to seeing your. <laughs> so, okay, Carrie. So that's, that's Susan Sarandon. That's what she said back in, I guess, 2016. It, the other thing that was interesting to me about this video is how much the host was like prodding her. But, but, but won't you feel bad if, if Hillary doesn't win? Can't, how, yeah. how can you not vote for Hillary? What, what about, how could, you, how could you not vote for Hillary? It was this like, he was clearly trying to put as much social pressure on her as he could to admit that she should vote for Hillary. Um, yeah, it's she did stand weird, up to that at least. Yeah, it's this weird, uh, why won't you join the cult? I don't understand. Why, why won't you get in the mob with us? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Our leader is great. <laughs> We're all moving together as a pack. Why won't you get in? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be in your pack. Gosh. Was... Okay, so tell me what you love about her. Well, here. okay. Uh, or generally. On. I'm going to find this one other thing I want to show you. Um, also, why is she in the news? Do you, just because of this person that you mentioned? This. Uh... I think it was, I think, I don't know. If somebody knows, let us know. The earliest thing I can find is that Deborah Messing tweeted at her a couple days ago, and then people just took off from there. Maybe there was some other reason why she's in the news. I don't know. Um, so she's blamed for what? They, she, for Hillary Clinton losing. They basically blame her and anyone who voted. Even the night of the election, I saw as people in my timeline were just melting down. People were posting stuff like, what will I tell my daughter about this misogynist world we live in, you know? And I think even I shared something like that. I've since deleted it because I was embarrassed later once it started changing. But <laughs> I think even I was like, think of the gir little girls. <laughs> but people were melting down. And one of the things people were doing was they immediately started blaming all of you third party voters. Because this, see on the left, this, this tension had been building up for a while. It was like, you have to get on the Clinton train. And a lot of Bernie people like myself were like, I don't know about that. I mean, personally, I waffled. I went back and forth for a long time. I was, one week I'd be, okay, I've got to vote for Clinton because all of this peer pressure and stuff was working. And I was believing the hype and I was believing that Trump is a demagogue and, oh my gosh, everybody's going to do everything they can. And even though my vote was going to be in California via absentee ballot, I still had this, you know, I felt this responsibility. I should vote for Clinton. But then the next week, my Ultimately, my gut told me Clinton was wrong. And I kept saying, I don't think I can vote for her. So I ultimately decided to vote for Stein, like Susan Sarandon did. Um, oh, is that who she voted for? Yeah. And they, and they oh, it's her fault. Clinton lost. It's right. Because, but, <laughs> because all of those, I, just to be clear, I assume Susan Sarandon, Sarandon lives in LA, like every other New one. New York. Something. One of the two, yeah. All of the electoral college votes from those states went to Hillary. So it doesn't matter <laughs> unless there's like, unless in the swing states, there's a few, a few fans of Susan Sarandon who are swayed away from voting for Hillary and that's going to be their argument. Right. Uh, I don't understand. By the way, I'm looking at this Deborah Messing character. Uh, she, she does she, this tweet about Susan Sarandon. She follows up with the question is, would we have children in cages, but for Trump, if you say yes, you're being willfully ignorant. 
that's just not true. Like those, in fact, even some of the pictures that are shared are from the Obama era, children in cages. Like those, that, that predates Trump. You could yeah. make an argument that there's been a larger increase or that he's mismanaged something or you don't like the way he's handled something, but the existence of children in cages at the border is not because of Donald Trump. No, it's not. But these people are, they're, they're low IQ um, or they're, I have seen some very highly intelligent people who fall for this crap. And I think it's just, it, that's the power of propaganda for you. Like that's the power of relentless propaganda. And the best propaganda is from, as you and I know, the legacy media is from the blue cathedral. It's from the people they trust. So they look at stuff like, they look at stuff like Alex Jones or Breitbart or anything that tells you what their point of view is. And they're like, oh, that's such crazy propaganda. It's like, well, you, you are so blind. You, you don't see like, those are opinion outlets, right? And Alex Jones is, has been in the past, at least a conspiracy theorist. But we all know that. We can all see that for what it is. You can't see what the media is. They can't A, see a quick it. note on Alex Jones. Yeah. Turns out he was right about fluoride in the water. So oh, let's not did, judge him too harshly. Did that just come out, that news? Yeah, there's like some study. I haven't read it yet. I plan to uh, read it in, in detail because I want to make sure I understand it. But there's some study that fluoride in the water does indeed lower IQ in children. So, uh, Well... Anyway, there you go, Alex you Jones go, conspiracy Alex theorist. Jones. <laughs> but so they can look at stuff like that and they can see something that's very easy to see. Well, this is this Breitbart has an opinion, yeah, it does. It tells you right on the about page what its opinion is, but they can't look at the blue cathedral, they can't look at the legacy media and see how they're being manipulated. And so people fall for this crap like kids in cages, oh, Trump, you know. But, but uh, I want to share this real quick. We're kind of all over the place let me see that's okay we can be all over the place because i actually want to i have kind of a broader question i'm going to ask you about in a okay. minute that this is well, reminding me well, of. by the way just so you know i didn't end up voting for stein i decided ultimately i was going to vote for stein and then i didn't care enough to get my absentee ballot in on time so my vote didn't count wait you didn't vote <laughs> no like officially officially that's didn't. awesome why <laughs> that's the that's the ancap way Good job. Well, Don't lend credibility to the system, Carrie. Good it just job. Needs to show you though that like how little <laughs> choice I felt I had as a person on the left who felt like none of the options really represented me. And I know Bernie people who went over to vote for Trump, which I thought at the time I thought was insane. But now I'm like, I kind of get it. <laughs> okay. Well, look I mean, this. yeah, Clinton was Clinton was the uh ruling class she was if you had a problem with the 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 system itself and the deep state and the oligarchy uh i could see why you would support bernie even though i, I mean i totally think he's got it 100 percent wrong at least he his rhetoric is outsider rhetoric and we need to dismantle blah 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 uh and trump had similar rhetoric clinton was yeah. just like it's my turn darling yeah <laughs> like you know, carry me over on my throne. It's my turn to rule Washington. <laughs> okay, look at this. This is the this is a really funny meme. I saw this guy post. This is what they think. This is behold the power of Susan Sarandon. <laughs> <laughs> like uh. Clinton had all these celebrities, and the, but that's just a partial list. You know, they could, you of could course. just keep going on and on and on with everyone in her column, including look, including Tim Robbins former spouse of Susan Sarandon. Um, uh, by the way, also notice, <laughs> there's not even a column for Trump. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't <laughs> She's responsible any. for Trump and there's not even a column for Trump there. <laughs> yeah, there's not even, but, but you know, Susan Sarandon is so all powerful that, uh, that she's the reason why Clinton lost. Like they are so delusional and the fact that Susan Sarandon is trending again and they're piling on her again, here's what it tells me. I was trying to figure out what does this mean? I think what it tells me and what it means is that they haven't learned anything. And they definitely haven't learned anything. <laughs> and they're going to be going into 2020 the same way they did into 2016, if not worse, um, having learned nothing about why they lost. And oh, why I, people I think it'll be much worse, by the way. 
and they don't care. Like I've talked to regular people um, on the left about this for the past couple of years. They don't care why I left or why I didn't vote for Clinton. They don't care why my friend Mikey is part of Walk Away. They don't care why Brandon Straka Strack started Walk Away. They they would rather pretend like all these Walk Away people are bots. Um, and right. they're all Russian bots. It's it's fascinating to me because it's like they don't they don't think it's a problem. Uh, can I? Can, so this is kind of related, I guess. Can I ask a question? And I, I have my own theories about this, but I want to hear your untainted theory about this. Why are so many celebrities so, A, progressive and like leftist, I'll say, and B, uh, vocal about politics? Uh, I have a couple of ideas why that is. Okay, so one is that, as we know, I'm going to talk about liberalism for a second. I'm not talking about SJW leftism. So, so when you say liberalism, just to clarify for the audience, you mean more like classical liberalism. Right. Okay. So people who are higher in trait openness, right, typically lean more towards the liberal side of the scale rather than conservative. Mm -hmm. They're more open-minded, open-minded about certain things. They're more um, open to experiences. They have probably... Uh, on that whole morality, the different channels of morality that Jonathan Haidt talks about. They have like fewer of those channels of morality. The stuff about sanctity and purity doesn't, doesn't really resonate with them as much, although it does when it comes to food and certain other things. But, um, but they, um, anyway, people who are higher in trait openness, who are more in the arts, like that whole people who are in entertainment, lean more towards the left. But what's happened, I think, is that is that the left and liberalism has slowly been cannibalized by this authoritarian leftism that I call that we call SJW ideology, this postmodern neo Marxism. And there are people out there like Deborah Messing running around who are fully in the grips of this authoritarian ideology, and she probably believes she's a liberal. She probably believes she's a progressive. She's not, she's an authoritarian and she's a puppet for the authoritarian ideology, but that's what, but puppet, puppets aren't aware of their strings being pulled, you know? Like, so that's, I don't know, am I answering it well or? I think so. Um, can we just clarify for people who don't know, when you say neuroticism, you're referring to the big five personality uh, assessment. Uh, like there's a categorization of personalities called the yes. big five. Although I didn't and... say neuroticism, I said openness, but yes. Sorry, that... I'm sorry, I was. I guess but, I was thinking neuroticism because I was thinking of celebrity. Um, yeah, they're probably, but they're also probably higher in neuroticism, and women are higher in neuroticism. Shocking. Yes. So the big five are openness, extroversion, uh, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and neuroticism. And we do know that this is kind of demonstrated. Uh, artistic types tend to be more like, higher on the openness scale, um, and uh, and I think conservatives tend to be higher on the conscientiousness scale yes um, but lower on openness and yes and vice versa for for people on the left or, or at least classical liberals i don't know how to i don't know if anyone's really looked at categorizing the extreme left that's happening now they have actually and here's what's interesting um they jordan have Pe yeah oh, cool. well jordan peterson has a grad student i think her name is brophy um who's done studies on the authoritarian left and mm -hmm. they've basically there may be other studies, but the, I've, I've watched a video about this one. They broke it down into um, PC authoritarians and PC egalitarians. And so PC authoritarians are more like what I would call the bad actors or what Brett Weinstein calls the bad actors. Um, PC egalitarians are more like liberals and what Brett Weinstein might call the tools, the useful tools, right? Okay. And so... I was a PC egalitarian. I was a useful tool for the belief system, but I was never, I think this is why I was able to leave it because I was never a PC authoritarian. I was to doing leave it. You didn't have to indict yourself. What do you mean? You didn't so to leave it. You didn't have to like convict yourself of being bad. Right. As if you're an authoritarian, if you're on that other side, if you're a bad actor, you have to like admit that 
your intentions were bad in order to leave. But if you're on the other side, that's not part of the equation. Right. It's like, oh, I thought I was doing good. Oops, I'm going to move. Yeah. Well, yeah, I thought I was doing good. I think the, I think the PC authoritarians, um, well, some of them think they're doing good too. They're just lunatics. Like they're, and, and the thing is the, P, the, the PC egalitarians, we were doing, I was doing the bidding of these authoritarians. You're doing their bidding. And so they found a couple different interesting things. The PC egalitarians, um, they both have trait openness in common and a couple of mm -hmm. other things. Um, What's, what are the big five again? They have trait open uh, openness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, extroversion, and agreeableness. Agreeableness. Okay, so they have trait, PC egalitarians are high in agreeableness. Okay, and they're like trying to please these authoritarians. And yep. they're, they also found that the egalitarians are, um, have um, higher, uh, uh, what's the word? Verbal cognitive ability. So they're better able to articulate things and they're better able to articulate the messed up beliefs of the authoritarians and okay. try and make sense of it. So they're the ones who are going out and and trying to um, trying to spread the word and to make it make sense. They're the ones who which are I guess makes sense because they are high in agreeableness. So they want people to get along, and to do that, they have to understand how to communicate better to people. So yes. they have a motivation to be good communicators. Yeah, they're like the missionaries and the authoritarians oftentimes are the ones who are like, it's not my job to educate you. Come in right. here, ally, <laughs> like, or whatever, you go do it. Okay. So, so anyway, they're higher in verbal cognitive ability. The PC authoritarians are lower in verbal cognitive ability. The other thing that they, they found that was very interesting, and I'm trying, I hope I remember this correctly. The PC authoritarians had something in common with authoritarians on the right. They had a high disgust sensibility. So purity actually and stuff actually does matter very much to them. Mm. Um, the, the the higher disgust sensibility, you can think about that in terms of like the, like people who are are really um, it, it could be anything like you know I'm not going to drink out of that cup because you were drinking out of it and they have germophobia or whatever. But it right. also means that they have a high disgust with people who, the other, so right. people in other groups. So high disgust sens sensibility might be an indicator that you're more likely to be in the way I understand it, like to, to have racist beliefs, to be prejudiced against certain groups. Well, and it makes, honestly, that makes sense with authoritarianism generally. I've this, I'm hearing this for the first time, but this makes sense for authoritarianism generally, because one of the things that I had to get over when I um, started to become more and more libertarian and then eventually voluntarist is this idea that like, there's going to be a lot of people out in the world making decisions and doing things that I don't like. And I need to let go of that. It's not my business. <laughs> like, that's not my business. And it's okay. You have um, to let go of that control, wanting to control everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't have a voluntary society filled with people who want to control everyone. Um, yeah. So that 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 disgust thing you're talking about kind of makes sense, which is from Jonathan Haidt, right? That's not from no. No, that, that is from Jordan Peterson's grad students research. Oh, However, okay. Jonathan Haidt has talked about disgust sensibility too. In fact, there's an interesting interview or discussion. It's a video with um, Peterson and Jonathan Haidt where they both talk about, they get into all this stuff and they talk about the disgust sensibility stuff. It's really interesting. Um, the two of them together is just like, wow, that's, it's fun to listen to. Um, what was the other, there was one other thing that was interesting. Oh, the PC authoritarians they being holding those authoritarian leftist beliefs mm -hmm. is correlated with having a mood or personality disorder either but, but not on the right just the left i don't know about the right they were studying they were studying the pc left oh, so okay. but but th that is interesting we've talked about mental illness and that, how that relates to sjw ideology before yeah so, and these are self this is self-reported these are people who are self-reporting Yes, I hold these beliefs and I have a mood or personality disorder. Although that could be, that data could be bad because part of those beliefs uh, elevates, you get elevated in social status if you have a disorder you can identify with. So True. they may have an incentive to say, I have blah, 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 even though True. they don't have it at any higher rate than any other people. Um, right. They all have some type of, I, they totally abuse stuff like PTSD and I have PTSD. Right. 
Right, right. Yeah, just from a, so if we break away from the big five model just for a minute and just kind of talk about personality types generally, um, or maybe even personality disorders, something that has occurred to me, and I don't know if this is true, and I don't mean to denigrate all people in, in, that are actors, because not everyone is like this, but it seems to me that there's a higher tendency for narcissism if you are an actor. Like one of, the thing, one of the things that drives you to, I mean, we've talked about this with comedians before. In fact, Mark Hughes mentioned this, like the kind of people that are driven to comedy are the kind of people that seek applause, seek the attention. They want like, that, that's part of their personality. It's one of the reasons they're driven, driven to do stand-up. And I think something similar can be said for actors. They're, they're seeking that fame. They're seeking that attention. They're seeking the secondhand and important importantness, if that's a word, <laughs> import from other people. And I'm wondering if that sort of narcissism is actually tied to this thing you're calling purity or Heights calling purity or the disgust thing where it's like, well, I'm, I'm right. And other, like, I'm, I want to be the center of attention. I want to be the one that's, everyone should listen to me, right? When I tweet out, vote for Hillary, everyone should be listening to me. And people like, I'm, I'm bothered uh, by this idea that people have different opinions because I want to be the center of attention. And that makes, that means my opinions are the center of attention. Um, it's also related to this. This is an ar this is a weird armchair thing, but it was something that I, an older guy at a defense contractor that I worked for when I was right out of college told me this and I hadn't noticed it because I was young at the time, but I've noticed it like ever since I see it all the time. There is a thing called hot girl syndrome and <laughs> it's when, when, when a woman is really, really attractive, people treat her differently. Men and women both treat her differently. I'm not sure how women treat her, but I can speak for the guys that I know. Guys are nicer. They're more, they, they defer more. They're, they're more willing to help. They, they give you a pass if you've you know, made mistakes a little bit more. They're like, they're, they treat you more, they generally treat you more uh, nicely than if you were not so hot. And what happens is if you run across someone who treats you like they treat everyone else, or if for some reason you cease being hot, like you get old, um, your, your expectation for how people treat each other has been skewed because your experience is that people are very, very nice and different than, to, to you. And so suddenly when that's not the case, you're totally shocked by it and offended. And you'll, you'll be like, that person's a jerk. When objectively, actually, they're not treating you any differently than they treat everyone else. You're just used to being treated differently. Um, and I think that might be often what happens with celebrities where in Hollywood, they're, they're the kings and queens. They're, they're, I, know where got, you, I knew where you were going with this, and I'm in full agreement. Keep going. Right? They've got the paparazzi hanging out. They've got everyone hanging off their every word. Paparazzi agents begging them to do movies. People, you know, throwing at fans asking for autographs. People wanting to interview them. Taking pictures when they're out at Starbucks. Like, they're, they are the, the gods and goddesses. And then, and then they go out and say a political opinion. And they expect to continue to be the gods and goddesses. And they are genuinely offended, <laughs> appalled, and shocked. How at, dare you? <laughs> how, yeah, how dare you not take my political opinion seriously? When in fact, their political opinion is no more valid than anyone else's political opinion. No. They just happen to have a platform where we have to listen to it. I, um, I, I've seen this up close and personal. Um, this is why I think, this is why I think people, if you're, if you're, people need to have become grounded and learned how to be humble before they become famous. It's not going to happen after. And that's why you see so many people turn into monsters because they haven't reached that age yet. And it's a different age for every person, I think, but they haven't reached that stage where they've become a real human before they become famous. Right. And then it's like, well, whoa, there's no turning back now. Um, so, and I've seen people become monsters 
Chris Rock, here's what I like about Chris Rock. Chris Rock says he's a monster. He said, I am a monster. And he said to my former client, you're going to become a monster. And at least he's self-aware about it. I respect that. And my client, my former client, we were both like, no, what's he talking about? My former client became a friggin' monster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and, it, and it was weird to like watch that happen. And for this person, I think on some level he had self-awareness about it. Cause I remember him talking once about like, how it can go to your head, having everyone around you waiting on you hand and foot and having someone you can send out for coffee like that. And, you know, everyone's kissing your ass. Everyone yeah. is, it changes things. It's, it's, I, I, I'm trying to say this with empathy. It may sound like I'm, but, but it, I don't know. I haven't been in that situation. Like it changes things and you're right. You're, you've become, uh, it, you become, I think, I think they become like used to people worshiping them and it's an unnatural state of being. And then, and then they, they apply that to their opinions about things like, Oh, well, my opinion matters a lot. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and you're right. There's this sense of it, Twitter's interesting because not only do we get to see which celebrities are mentally ill and we didn't used to be able to see inside their heads that way, but, um, but also they have to interact with the people. <laughs> the people have immediate access to them. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, some of the best funniest things on Twitter, when you see just like some random guy or girl in the flyover states like come back with a witty retort to some idiot celebrities comments i love that i love yeah. it anyway but i guess i guess the i didn't explain why they're left. you did you explained why maybe they're left-leaning but i don't know if the narcissism explains why they're left-leaning or, or not um, um it no, might I it might because you definitely it, it is related to that purity thing you're talking about um and the disgust, mean? right? Well, th this idea that like, well, we can't just let people, we can't let people be free and have other opinions. Like that's, that's not okay. <laughs> so yeah. that kind of pushes you towards the authoritarian left in some way. And you're probably not going to be authoritarian right because authoritarian right j t tends to want to censor art a lot more. And you're like, that's not, you're not in a world where that makes sense, but oh, but they they censor art. Here's the crazy thing: oh, an, author fair. an authoritarian is an authoritarian, and so like you and I have talked about, that's why left and right doesn't matter so much to me. It, it, it whatever. There's a there's right authoritarians. There's left authoritarians. I care if you're an authoritarian. I don't care which side of the spectrum you're on. But so they they are at a point now. The SJW left, the authoritarian left. They are censoring art. They try to get books pulled. They they yep. mob the publishers. Uh, they try to get plays canceled. They, that's, that's true. Cancel culture is a huge thing, and we've talked a, about it. Yeah. It's a huge thing. Yeah. They, there's a, there's a, we should do a video, a deep program sometime about the young adult world, the young adult novel world, like the writing world. It's great. Yeah. SJWs have totally taken over. It's hard to get a book written now because they're like, all of your character, you need to have a diverse array of characters, and they need to reflect all these different races. And then if you write that, they're like, stay in your lane. You can't know the experience of a black person. Why are you writing for a black right. person? <laughs> like, right. You can't win. And they've even pulled books of like writers of color. They, everyone now is being thrown under the bus. They can't write anything. They've pulled poetry. What, what's that magazine that apologized for publishing a poem because people got offended? Like yeah. the yeah. artists I've talked to, some of the, um, there are some very brilliant artists that I'm blessed to have in my world who are, who, who are aware of what's happening. Um, because they're good artists and because they see art being encroached upon it's the yep. frauds it's the it's the crappy ones who are cool with this it's the crappy comics who are cool with this it's the crappy artists who are cool with this but the really talented ones they're not woke they're they're not authoritarians they're real artists right and anyway you know that's a great point um yeah i don't, I don't have anything great to add that's a great point so this has been an interesting episode of just kind of meandering and going some but it's been i found it interesting so. it's a weird meandering episode i don't know that i completely to my satisfaction answered the question of why hollywood celebrities are on the left but we got some indications higher openness you know um i i guess uh i guess maybe there's another factor which is there's a there's certainly uh there's certainly an element of serendipity to success in acting that doesn't exist elsewhere. It, it exists in every industry to some extent, but 
in acting, there's, there's a lot more serendipity. And so maybe there's a feeling after you've reached success that um, there's, it's fragile somehow. And that you, I, either you think that capitalism is bad because why are you successful and someone else isn't? And you deep down kind of know you're not really any better than that other actress that didn't get the part and whose career never took off. I think part of it is, um, you've talked, you've touched on this before, but, um, when we talked about like Peggy McIntosh, the, this extremely elite white woman, wealthy white woman who came up with the concept of white privilege and, right. you know, Marx, who was very well off and <laughs> this, <laughs> yes, who never had a job and was basically a kept man. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> there's, you, you brought this up and that, it gave me a lot to think about in a conversation we had. I think it was even a phone call we had when you first mentioned this to me, but it's this idea of like some people who, when they become famous, not only do they lose all sense of what's normal and they get, they become huge egomaniac monsters because everyone's, everyone's bowing down to them and treating them differently in a way that's weird. But um, in addition to that, maybe some of them have this feeling of unearned guilt like, or this feeling of unearned, like, why me? You, you're the one or who's- unearned saying, success. Like, why am I success. successful? Yeah. Um, and so then they try and try and work that out in some way by making it about, like, their, their, priv their white privilege or whatever. Like Rosanna Arquette's tweet recently about her- Yeah, I'm, so I'm sorry for being white. white. Yeah, well, it is the- I mean, that is a, the Peggy McIntosh thing. It's conflating the other privileges she had with her skin color privilege. Um, and maybe it is maybe it is just, they need something else to blame for inequality in the world. They look out and they see inequality and they need something to blame for it that makes them feel good about themselves. And so uh, they, they can kind of, if they, cause if they say, oh, there's inequality because I'm, you know, I have this part because I'm a better actor. A, that's probably not true, and they probably deep down know it. And B, it makes them look like a narcissist, so they can't really say that, even if it were true. Um, so they kind of get they get stuck in this. How do I how do I explain? You know, how do I virtue signal that I care about the little people, <laughs> right? Because that's how they view them. And <laughs> the best way to do that is to like. You know, well, what what are the what are the ideologies that talk about the working class most? Well, it's Marxism. It's you know, it's not capitalism. Doesn't talk about you know the poor. It, it could uh, because it's certainly the reason that we have fewer poor, and and humankind has has benefited from capitalism immensely. But it's not it's not the main thing that people talk about. I don't know. It would be a, it would be an interesting discussion to have. I'm not sure we can solve it today, and I know this episode's kind of meandering already, but... Well, I'm just happy we get to talk about Susan Sarandon, who I adore, even though she didn't want to drive through Texas in Thelma Louise. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Thelma well... Louise. I don't want to go through Texas, Louise. Thelma. That was her, just to... This, this is the other thing, just to keep in mind. That was her character, Carrie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually actors sometimes get confused with their own characters and like, well, I've played a doctor, so therefore my opinions <laughs> on healthcare are the best. <laughs> like, like Bill Nye, the science guy. Somebody had the best comment on the video the other day. He's like, yes, Bill, Bill Nye is not a science guy. <laughs> no, he is not. He is no. not. He's a failed comedian. He's a mechanical engineer slash failed comedian who is not a science guy. But he plays one on television, and that's enough. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you for watching this meandering episode. I hope it doesn't, uh, I hope it's okay at Happy the end Tuesday. of the day. Happy Tuesday. And um, I don't know, Carrie, what else do we have to say? Anything else? Um, but I'm just going to keep pushing book clubs so people read and join us. September 8th, we're doing our next book club discussion. And Jack says goodbye. Read 1984.